You will repel men, repel men who are not ready for you. And this is a good thing. Here's why. If you've ever been talking to someone and then you go on a couple of dates, you hang out, everything's great, and then all of a sudden they pull away, this might be why. If you have your ish together, a good job, you got a good head on your shoulders, you take care of yourself mentally, emotionally, spiritually, physically, you got it going on. And maybe you fall into the category of, I can't understand why you're still single. This may be why. If a man approaches you to get to know you, he's doing this with minimal information, right? Then he collects the information and he maybe saw you here and now he's realizing that you are way up here and he might be here and this is too far to jump. You know what I'm saying? And this is why it's a good thing because when you enter the relationship, you're still here, he's still here. This is gonna be what constantly tugs on your heart. He's not ready. He hasn't done the work. He hasn't gotten himself to the level where he feels like he can provide for you. Because how is he supposed to provide for you when you're up here? This doesn't mean that you come down here. This just means that he's not ready. And so in essence, when this happens, it is a good thing because then you don't need to go through the heartbreak of trying to close that gap that will inevitably not work. Now, there's a difference between this and the anxious attachment giving off clingy relationship vibes with minimal information. Basically, love bombing your own mind to acting like you're in a relationship before you have all the facts or even at that point, right? Which can also repel a man. There's so many amazing women out there and it's always like, why is she still single? Why is she still single? This is why. And the reason that it hasn't happened yet is because the man that you and I are gonna end up with is gonna be, hold on, come on. The man that you and I are gonna end up with is gonna be here. He's gonna lead us so we're both there. You know what I'm saying? Love you, bye. Women who cannot find a man always try to tell themselves that they are too good for men and that's why men don't want to commit to them it's one of the lamest ways to make excuses to not do any self-reflection it's never anything to do with them or the fact that their standards are so high they are looking for the perfect man who does not exist it's just a prime demonstration of coping taking accountability is like poison to these hit the wall women facts I was rejected by a matchmaker this week you wouldn't be able to work with me when we met i told her what i was looking for and told her a lot about me and i tried to highlight some of my core qualities including the fact that i'm very very type a organized i like to be the leader I told her the types of things that i like doing i also told her i was looking for a man who was also a leader because i don't want to always be the leader believe it or not I told her I was looking for someone that was at or above the same income level as me, driven, who is ambitious, who is ready for a long-term relationship and ready to get married. She may have actually picked up on the fact that I'm a little high strung. I'm not like a stressed out or anxious person. I'm just high energy or type A. This is who I am. And she was asking me, do I meditate? No. Do I journal? No do anything woo. And I said, no. So in fact, I'm not even on the same planet as woo. When talking about what I didn't like in a man, I said I could never really be with a beta type man. I specifically used the word doormat. I said, I would chew them up and spit them out. And her response was, well, I married that type of man. She was saying that, you know, men really like a soft woman and I should try some of these vision board, journaling, meditating type of things. Would never going to be that type of person. She also said that she could sense I had some walls up, which of course I'm coming to meet a woman who I'm asking to find my future husband at the rate of several thousand dollars. I, of course, am going to be here really just trying to interview you, my dear friend, because I want to know if I'm going to get my money's worth with you. 
So of course I'm going to have some walls up. I also think it's perfectly normal to have some walls up when you are meeting someone for the very first time and who also had not taken the time to do her own research on me by stalking me on the internet. She definitely didn't have time because she asked for my socials no more than one hour before our meeting. So I asked her if she thought I would be ready for her services, her response, she essentially said that I am not ready for her type of services because I have too much work to do. My walls are too high and I'm not ready for a long-term committed relationship at the ripe age of 38 where I have been in therapy for 10 plus years. She also said that I, she's too woo for me, which I can accept that. That's fine. However, I shouldn't need to be a woo type person to be worthy of love. She also said that I need to soften a little bit and men like a softer woman. Essentially, I spent $350 to meet with this woman, have her tell me I am not worthy of love as I am, but the fact that I need to change in order to be worthy of love and partnership, which honestly, I think for that reason alone, she should have her matchmaking license taken away because we shouldn't be pushing on these narratives that people are not worthy as they are. And essentially telling women that they, the type of woman they are isn't worthy of love. That is a narrative that should not be given to anyone or it is dangerous commentary. And the fact that she said this to my face had some audacity. Well, we're celebrating my 38th birthday tonight and we are going to wash all of what she said aside. I am so excited. And we're going to believe that no matter the type of woman you are, love is out there for you. We are not going to listen to this toxic narrative. The therapist was right when she told her that men typically prefer softer women. She refuses to listen to the professional, yet she is the one who is struggling to find a relationship. Modern women only want others to validate their personal opinions about things. They don't ever want to be told or admit that they could be wrong. Meanwhile, the therapist is already in a happy relationship, while this hit-the-wall woman is on social media ranting about why she is forever single. Poor, deluded females.